some some visuals of cows uh, just grazing on the luscious green grass here in uh, the Midlands in Kayser and we're here uh, on Moy River for the launch of the Spring Grove Dam and we're taking a look at a bit of an environmental aspect of it now uh, we're going to see if uh, there's been much of an impact to this area during the building of the dam and with me now is environmentalist Kogi Governor and she's uh, with the Trans Caledon Tunnel Authority. Kogi, a huge pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Kogi, what sort of impact would a, pro would a project of this nature have on the environment? Gosh, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, I think I have to prioritize because time's limited. One of the key challenges that we've had on this project is uh, bringing in material to construct the dam wall. We had decided not to open a local quarry because this is a very serene, um, picturesque, touristy area. And a quarry is a nasty, dirty business. Um, so we wanted to bring in the material from a commercial source. But we had a restriction and we weren't allowed to put in any trucks on the public roads until we had completed a traffic management plan through an intensive public participation process. And even when that was approved, we could only bring in 30 trucks within limited hours um, and eventually we moved it to 60. But that put huge time delays on the project and a huge cost. And you also spoke about your involvement uh, during the building of uh, this, uh, this uh, dam. Tell us a bit more about that, how you were hands-on in, in, in assessing the environmental impact or perhaps um, moving things around so that it can be possible. Tell us a bit more about your role. Um, perhaps what's most interesting um, for you and our viewers is um, we have people who lived in the dam basin. Um, this dam is surrounded by private landowners, but these particular group of affected people um, were not owners of the land. They were tenants or laborers on, on, on those um, properties. And we've had to relocate 38 households. Um, we purchased a property in Moy River on the old Great Town Road, and 33 of these families will, will be living there. We are waiting for the rezoning process to be complete with the municipality, and then we'll start constructing houses. Once we've done that, we will hand over full title to these, uh, these hustles. It will be a legacy that we'll leave behind. Another um, key thing about this project was the uh, removal, the exhumation and, and relocation of graves. When we started the EIA, um, before we were granted the authorization, we had about 37 graves on the register. Um, at the present, we've got about 227, of which about 148 or so were, were exhumed. Um, but we, we found 112 actual graves, which we then relocated to, to the local cemeteries and, and to traditional areas that people requested um, them to be moved to. An intense process um, took a long time to, to reach consensus on how people should be paid, what kind of payment. We had to respect the, the traditional and cultural practices, so we made animals available to the people to perform the ceremonies. Um, we also paid for all costs with, associated with the removal of that, um, removal of that grave. Um, and also paid people as the lotium because it is a very traumatic process. Um, and yeah, so I think that's the, 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 the two key, the key things on the project. Yeah. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Kogi. I wasn't aware of all the logistics that were involved in bringing this to pass. And we'll take a look at more of that and going forward, how they plan to sustain this area and make sure that the benefits outweigh uh, any of the, the cons that may exist. Well, we'll take a quick break. Morning Life continues after this.